welcome to yet another episode of the Bielsa Bible with Rob Mulholland and Mickey P. Kerr. And it's always fun in the world of Bielsa. We've got so much to get into today. And obviously we've been overwhelmed with the correspondence. Yeah, we always. absolutely love it. Like this is one of our favourite things about doing this podcast is uh, meeting all of you from around the world, basically, and reading your comments and your messages. So we will start as but, we intend to always do from yeah, now keep, on. Keep in touch because I feel like it's a community that's building. Exactly. And it's beautiful, man. It really is. So we will dive into the post bag to start off, shall we? Let's Ooh. go to correspondence straight away. The e post bag. Mm. <laughs> So, as ever, we've had loads of great comments and messages. If you want to email us, the address is bielsabible at gmail.com, or you can just comment on the YouTube video or wherever, and we will see them all. I apologise if we can't respond to them all. We get loads, but we love reading them. We really do. That's genuinely true. Yeah. So, we wanted to read a couple out here. Um, we've got a lovely comment here from Gonzalo Flores. Ooh. And he says, I love this. I'm Gonzalo from Argentina. I'm a Godoy Cruz fan. And his, his, this is his brackets a small club from Argentina and a huge Bielsa fan keep going Vamos Leeds that's great isn't yeah, it yeah keep going Bit yeah of and it's lovely we'll do mate yeah we're gonna keep making these uh, but I love hearing from uh, people in Argentina who aren't uh, necessarily Newell's or Velez fans it's nice to see that there are Bielsistas who appreciate Marcelo from other clubs and from definitely, other places definitely what he, what he did at Argentina in terms of the national team mm. uh, was seen as a failure by some yeah. but other Argentinians he split right down the middle with yeah. Argentina and, and he's got so much support out there because people see the beauty in, in Bielsa and the philosophy and, and the person he is. Yeah, and that that's uh, that brings us on to our next comment. It's another point on this. This one's from Super to Hero One Two Three, which <laughs> means uh, Superhero to Hero was taken as a name on yeah. YouTube. Yeah, One Two Three, the best password in the world. <laughs> <laughs> one Two Three Four. Sometimes. But this comment is beautiful. Love this. Uh, she's put, "You guys are great," which is always a good start. You nice know. one. Thank yeah. you for that. Um, she's put, "I don't even like football or sports for that matter, but my mm. dad and brother are staunch Leeds United fans. I now follow Leeds because of Bielsa." Elsa and his principles. Love you guys, Tara from Bradford. Isn't Thank that you so awesome? much, Tara. Yeah, that's amazing. Doesn't so even like sport, but has been so touched and moved by the Bielsa story and who this man is and like what he represents that it, she now follows Leeds. It just shows that Bielsa transcends football. Yes, and, he, and he's dragged someone else in. Um, and Tara is going to just love the fact that there's someone out there that that is so different mm. and stands for values that we all want to stand for. And we've all taught as a young child, and and they often get forgotten in the world. And yeah. you know, it's a harsh cruel world you've got to adapt no some people don't adapt some people stand firm yeah. and and they stick to their principles and they are beautiful and tara you've joined uh the, the bielsa club and we're more than happy to have you yeah absolutely delighted thank you so much for that and, and uh, yeah keep watching we from love it. bradford and thanks to the uh the mighty whites in bradford always, yeah. uh, always absolutely lovely. delighted to have leeds fans <laughs> over there town full of leeds fans in it too right <laughs> we've got another one here this one comes from uh sasha virgilini which is an incredible name. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, and I love that. I know. Sasha is a bit like Sashay. It is a little bit yeah. like Sasha. It's, it's more spicy. Yeah, <laughs> it's spiced up a little bit. Sasha. Yes. No, Sasha. it's awesome. Sasha Virgilini. Love it. Yeah, and the Italiano there as well. The Italian there? influence in Argentina. There was a, a lot of uh, Italians moved there a long they time ago. They did, didn't they? That, 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 that's a story that's come up with us uh, yeah. a few times. A little well, bit of history for you. I just you. thought, why not? I mean, where else are we going to go? It's yeah. the other side of the world. Fuck <laughs> it. <laughs> so, Sasha, thank you so much for your message. Uh, what the put is, I'm enjoying this so much. Thank Thanks from Cordoba, Argentina. In this city, he played at one club, Instituto. So this was when uh, Bielsa was playing. He played at Instituto in Cordoba. And he was very disappointed because none of his teammates would stay after training to improve their own skills. They were just <sighs> waiting for the word of the coach and they would leave after that. Which, of course, is not Bielsa's ethos at all not at all I, I i wonder what bales has said to them you know, I, I can imagine where, where are you going you yeah. know he's doing press ups sit ups running about really fast i say there's one if there's one thing bales can't stand it's a uh, you know a lack of effort yeah you've got to be fully committed well you know if you if you're in the privileged position of being a professional footballer you you deserve you should give it it's your duty to get the maximum amount of your potential I who think. are you playing for you're playing for the people yeah exactly it's important 
And like, yeah, so I think that that's a beautiful part of Bielsa. And like, what as Sasha has finished this off with is, and that's why I want to share with uh, share with you Borges' words. Now, Borges, as far as I can tell, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. He's an Argentinian filmmaker who uh, said this quote. So obviously, Bielsa would be a fan. He loves Argentinian he loves film. cinema. Yeah, he exactly. Does. Which is a point we'll come to later on, actually, mm. in the sermon. But um, yeah, he, what Borges said here. I'm going to attempt this in Spanish. You know, you're joking. I'm going to give it a crack. I'm going to give it a can go. Can you do that? <laughs> We're about to find out. Have you been practicing by my butt? I have not been practicing. This is. I'm just going to have a crack at it. I'm going to put on my best Spanish accent and just rip through it. So I, I look. I look forward to three thousand comments telling me what I got wrong. But let's have a go, right? Let's. let's Good luck, mate. What could I'm possibly go wrong? I'm loving this. Yeah, speaking Spanish on a podcast that's watched by a lot of Spanish speakers. <laughs> mate, you can do this. Come on, I've got this. I'll tell you. Right here we go. Borges' words. Que cada hombre construya su propia catedral. Para que viva de obras de arte ajenas y antiguas. That was amazing. Mate, that was the best on. Spanish I've ever heard. Come on. <laughs> Mate, that was amazing. Thank you I very mean, much. Honestly, I mean, I'm really proud of you. Yeah, you don't speak Spanish, though. No, no, I don't. But it sounded like Spanish. It's it sounded amazing. Thank I you. loved it. And he had the ugh in there as I well. Know, they, they can all the ugh, ugh, stuff. Because we've been taught. Thank you so much. So yeah. uh, let Look, me... I recognise the word hombre, which means man, There I think. you go. Absolutely smashing Don't it. speak Spanish. You're having a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so thank you for that. So if uh, I'll say it in English now, in case you are English, or if you speak Spanish and couldn't understand me, which is... <laughs> Highly likely. Very possible. So uh, the, the words are, let every man build his own cathedral. Why live off foreign and old works of art i absolutely love that Mate, quote, you, you know? live by that well this is it like i absolutely like when i saw this i just like related it to it so hard i'm genuinely considering getting a tattoo now of let every man build his own cathedral what like, about what about somebody body i don't know i've decided no i'm uh i'm get it I'm, on your forehead backwards <laughs> So you see it in the mirror. Yeah. And it rem reminds you, every time you look in the mirror, you go, yeah, put your flat back back or whatever it's called. Slap back, back, slap back. Snap back. Snap back and just go, yeah, I'm my own cathedral, man. Yeah, I don't know if I want to quite look like the Bielsa Post Malone. I think I'll stick to like <laughs> arms and legs and that. Um, but yeah, I love it. Like I love that because what that means to me is uh, that, you know, every man should, uh, every person, you know, like man in this sense is, you know, uh, generic. But don't be sexist. I won't be. Uh, every man, woman or non-binary person uh, build their own <laughs> cathedral. What that means to me is like live off your own work and like make your own thing rather than waiting for people to hand you things. Go and just do what you want to That's do. Totally. With your stand-up, the way you do it, the DIY self, yeah. you go out there, you make your films, you take those to the people, you don't rely on anybody. Yeah, no, that, I'm totally all about that. Rather than like trying to like wait for the comedy industry to hand me something or for someone on t uh, TV producer to go, oh, he's the guy we want. Like rather than waiting for that, because it's not going to happen. They don't like the kind of comedy I do. I'm too well, dirty. you're northern. I'm northern and I'm dirty. So, but people like that. So I just make it and I put it out on YouTube for people to watch and I go direct to them. And I think it's, it's, it's something that I genuinely believe in. That sort of like DIY ethic of just do it yourself. I absolutely love it. And you do, you uh, built this studio. You what? This yeah, is yeah. Ro, ro, we make this ourselves, and it's the royal way. Because I'll be honest with you, I live by a kind of different ethos where I just <laughs> hang around with people that are like you. <laughs> <laughs> what is it like? Look, you, you, on your coattails, mate. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just here for the ride. You do, you do live off your own skill, though. You know, you you make your own things, you make your own music, you you go and do this. You I know? suppose, yeah. And I also, I, I'm a teacher as well. I'm a primary school teacher. Yeah. I'm, very, I'm very proud of that. I, I had to yeah. work hard to get that and that's one of the few times in my life i had to i had to knuckle down mm. and do something that wasn't in my nature yeah and uh and and i'm glad i did now yeah but yeah that hard work does pay off when you this go out and it. do it i mean i only did that because my mum told me to do it yeah <laughs> she was a private school teacher no, i just do things people tell me to do and when someone has a good idea i follow them <laughs> that's not bielsa is it it's not a bad plan though i but think that's why i admire him so much because he's he, he makes things happen, and, and, mm. and I admire you for what you do. You just make things Stop happen. Stop it, you. <laughs> but no, like that, I think there's a beautiful message there, like yeah. wonderful words, and really applies to Bielsa. So thank you, Sasha. That is absolutely spot on. That, that is, is the standard, nice. guys. If you're going to be commenting, that, that is, email stands out. And, and you know what? Brilliant. I'll just add in if you are Argentinian and you know of other uh, philosophers and uh, people such as Borge. Borge, yeah. Borges. Then, then Bor please Borges. Borges. Yeah, please introduce us to them because this is part of the Bielsa story. The yeah. Argentina is where Bielsa was raised and obviously where he became who he is. And, yeah. And, and I'm sure these people have had an effect on him because he's a very well-read man. Exactly, yeah. So thank you so much for that and introducing to us to Borges. Uh, absolutely loved it. So that, that was absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much. Ace, man. 
So now is the point in the show where traditionally we talk about the games that have just happened this week for all the various Bielsa teams around the world. Now, uh, we are recording this in the past before this round of games has happened. Just due We're about to record it in the present, though, for us. For us, it's the present. For yeah. you, it's the past. And we are now going go go to go to the, the future... future to us which is still the past for you the past for you this because is, we've recorded it in the before you've watched this it is mental. but after we've said this we're gonna do that so let's go to us now to discuss this week's game this has got weird inception so here we are in the future but still in the past and weirdly enough also in the present if you count what i'm saying now in we were straddling three different tenses here aren't we rob we are the christopher nolan of podcasts about bielsa I'm totally confused no idea what's going on but good to see you mickey how are you yeah feeling? you too you too and we are here to talk about last week's game which i believe was uh was it aston villa was it aston it villa was. away we had a little cheeky game against aston villa and oh it was it was a bit good wasn't it wow i mean i, I remember um the episode the previous episode We'd mentioned the Villa game, and I kind of went, oh, because it was a bit tasty. It was a bit, uh, on paper, the the, the, the most informed team, mm. uh, you know, top of the league. And, <laughs> and you're thinking, Christ, they've, they've, they've beaten Liverpool 7-2. Everything's working for them. People yeah. are talking about ba Barkley. People are talking about Grealish. These are two England internationals. Uh, and we, we, have, we have a lot of injuries. We've got we're in, like, defenders are out. Mm -hmm. We've got a makeshift back four. We've got strike in the middle on the one, uh, playing in the one, and, and the CDM is, is untested. And we just blew him off the fucking park, mate. It was unreal, it, wasn't it? It was the it's the most one of the greatest Bielsa performances mm. we've had at Leeds United, I think. Yeah, it was up there with the 4 0 against West Brom. It was up there with the first half against Cardiff that we ended up drawing three all. <laughs> yeah, you know, there were three goals. First up. half against it, Arsenal. It was one of those where we were at that level where it was we became unplayable. We were good in the first half. We were good. We should we have scored well. more. I mean, ba Bamford had a. Uh, I thought his chances. I thought he did okay with him. That header was particularly decent. It was mm. just, just those just are hard wide. chances, you know. And like that, yeah. A top class striker will, you know, miss a couple. Like Cristiano Ronaldo misses chances like that all the time, you know. Yeah, it's... they do, and, and the way he missed them was quite good. If his that sounds weird. No, his movement it, was brilliant. He was in that yeah, position to receive. Great those connection. Balls. It was. It was just a yard, you know, a yard yeah, either he side. Handed them hard towards the corner and just didn't quite come off. I mean, like, look, it, it would be incredibly churlish of us to come here and criticise Patrick Bamford after that performance. It was, it was. I can't believe it. I mean, I'm so pleased for him. Six goals, six games. He's on for 38 goal season. I know. Yeah, much. he's going to be the new <laughs> Kevin Phillips. I love it. Like, oh. I just, I'm so pleased for him. Like you say, like because you know he's been written off constantly and he's been always like looked at this sort of like tough Aravist, who you know but he, he clearly cares and he works so hard and he's put in such a shift like no one has worked harder than Patrick Bamford over the last couple of years no one and no they haven't for him to they haven't be... run as much no one's run as no strikers run as much as he has the, the, the with the intensity he in... runs at defenders as well that, that that forward press that we keep talking about oh, we've always got mm. one less up front you know that the all stats aren't we a brilliant analysis they've done we play the plus one at the back and a minus one at the top. So he's got the most running to do. He may, you know, he's got to cover that angle and he's got to close the ball down as well. And he does it so, so well. He, he's, the, he's the start of the high press and he, mm. he does it so well. And to see him with elite level finishing. Yeah. Let's talk about the first goal because it was such a great breakaway. Yeah, uh, It was fluid football, wasn't it? And then we get Rodrigo pop, popping up, who's been amazing for us defensively. Most presses mm. as well, the most pressures. He was he was another one who was absolutely unreal in that game. Oh, wasn't brilliant. He? Like, now and he's it, starting to know the team a bit more, you know. He, he, now he's starting to know where people's runs are. He's just yeah, his quality I, he's, on he, the ball. He is, is really good. <laughs> and, and I think we're about to see... It's not quite happened for him yet, and that elite world class finish that he's got in his he's got in his locker. He's not a massive goal scorer, but you know that he's gonna score a few from outside the area, just passing it into the top corner. He's mm. got that, you can see it. But yeah, Bamford's uh, anticipation was great because right. he he's actually he makes himself available for the cross, which doesn't come. And just before he hits it, you see him hang back mm. and and wait and just and just and just you know the space. ball is the ball that's clever, that's for clever me. center forward play, isn't it? It really is. He sniffed it out and then the ball drops and he and he's still got a little bit of work to do because the keeper's quick to close him down after he gets yeah. back up, slots it nicely in the Pins corner. Alan Clark over that one, wasn't there? Like, yeah, the sniffer. Sniffer goal. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. I mean, and the second goal, I mean, just nonchalantly just 
outside the area. He was annoyed was at that point. He was angry because of that penalty shout. And that's when well, he really like kicked into another gear, wasn't it? Like, he, yeah, he just got and, bit between his teeth. Like, I think he saw red and he was just like, I'm just going to score worldies from now on. Ty- Tyrone Mings made a bit of an error by he he, he, he dirt his foot. Mm. Tyrone Mings is trying to grab him and, and it's, it's bad form, that. He is, yeah, yeah. He, I didn't like it. it. But Leeds aren't divers under Bielsa. It's a different approach. So, it's an well, honest look, approach. Bamford has a couple of times, but like, I won't be lectured on diving by a team that features is Jack Green. I think he I did in his, uh, you know, when, when he pretended to get hit, I was embarrassed by that in, the, in, in his first season, but that's that's gone now. It's, it's it, it was a bit, uh, but after that, you could see that he was like, I, I, I've got a point to prove mm. here. And then they let him turn like that. I mean, they, they had, I mean, maybe because they're tired. They lacti- I mean, I've said lactic for- acid football. Yeah. Look out for it. I've given it to Henry, Henry Winter. It's the perfect way to describe Leeds under Bielsa, lactic acid football. They didn't close him down at all. Yeah, he and he's on his right foot. And he just spins around on his left and puts it in the top bloody corner. Unreal. It was a great finish. I love the uh, Jack Jack Anderson's reaction as well. He went, oh like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was yeah, a great I think we all reaction. reacted like that, didn't we? It was just absolutely we did, because we, we, I, we haven't, we haven't been seeing that from Bamford mm. in that that level of finishing um, very no, often. But, but he's, he's got it. He's clearly got the it. third. The third goal, mate. It's just disgusting, wasn't it? Like, they shouldn't disgusting. have been allowed to put that on before the watershed. It, it was like it, there was it, children that watching post that. Nine and it o'clock. Was yeah. Filth. Filth. It was. It was filthy. Just, just sometimes, like Bielsa ball is, it's by far the most beautiful way to play football. It is yeah. when Bielsa ball is good. There is no football that is better. It's just. It was just one of those where the whole move is just ping to ping can to we, ping. Can we, Every part working perfectly together. Can oh. we discuss my LS25 lad, Jamie Shackleton? Oh, well, how good was he? I mean, it, it, his In energy. In that circumstance as well, to come it's on like so that. so good. I mean, I, honestly, the amount of ground he covers, the, he's always looking for a one-two, mm. always looking to progress the ball. Both footed. And, and he's, got, he's clever. Yeah. He's, he's, he knows what the picture is. And he was he was involved in the third goal there. Yeah, who needs Lung Rodrigo to roll, Nice little one two, and then Bamford gets the ball and does that. But you've got you, if that's my tip. If I'm an Aston Villa fan and I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm four centre backs <laughs> surrounding him and just watching him, I, I, it's, dis- of him. Go, it's disgustingly bad defending. You've oh, got to say that. But Bamford just like all right, I'll let me Catalyzes. turn. All He's right, go on then. It. I'll just slot it in. It was so calm and collected yeah. from the Bamford. Whole, it was it, like it was that. elite level finishing, but it shouldn't have been allowed to happen. But you know yeah. what? We've made that. We've made that with our... They're knackered. Yeah, they're we psychologically were fucked over. Like, it we, could have been 8-0. It should we, have been bloody 8-0. We ran over them second half completely. It, was, it wasn't It was even like a, a game of football anymore. It was a massacre. No. And then like... It was a massacre. A real like lovely little highlight as well towards the end was Rafinha I loved the little massacre on. as well. <laughs> <laughs> but like Rafinha coming on and then playing... That pass was... What was that? We've been told... Obscene. How do you describe that? It was, it was disgusting, filthy. What's worse than that because that is that pass oh, oh. Like, it I've, was I've, ridden you've with got to watch that in incognito mode haven't you in case God, the missus no. oh, my. oh it was just incredible yeah like, that, to see that pass and, and to execute it I'm excited and, to and, see more from him I think everyone was a bit like what the fuck was that We've and then everyone like just jogs into position like, we're, we're on the attack now mate yeah clearly yeah. I mean the- that there's a lot to come from him. It was it was an unreal performance from everyone. Uh, Ailing was an absolute monster at centre back. I, I, I thought I thought Ailing was man of the match. Yeah, That's like how, very possibly. Like, even though you've got the match ball of going to Patrick Bamford, obviously. But it was a colossal. But I thought it was that good. It was. He was that good. Um, Strike actually got took off, uh, but didn't do that bad. He no. actually played quite well. It was on the verge of getting sent off. It was unlucky <laughs> to get booked <laughs> as well. I think that was like Jack Grealish was looking for that. But once he was, of course he, he was. was. It was in a silly a tackle, trouble. really. It, 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 in a way, he, he had to make it. It wasn't his man. He was marking Barkley. I mean, the all stats aren't we uh, on their Patreon. If you sign up with them, they send you a, a video of the analysis, like match of the day start, and it's really good and. He said that strike. He didn't make that many mistakes. Actually, played quite well. But the uh, he noticed that they'd uh, they were so narrow. Their three midfielders that uh, he, he chucked on uh, Jamie Shack just for the energy and, and just to, yeah. just to create width and just to and and, and he realised that that the, the the tactical formation we were playing wasn't wasn't working. That's it. So when he put when he put on Shaq, we just destroyed them. Yeah, it was unreal. But Amazing. Everyone can play anywhere. There is no we're gonna finish top four because it doesn't matter about injuries. Yeah. Everyone like Henry Winter said, you haven't got the squad depth. We have. We've yeah. got eighteen players on the yeah. bench. Doesn't matter. Like Stuart Dallas is a one man subs bench. Exactly. I mean you, you know you take out our best two defenders 
So what? We've got another best two defenders. Just I'd, I'd argue Robin Cock is our best defender now. Yeah, he is. I mean, he, he's won the most uh, aerial jewels. I think he was great in, again. In the the whole League. team was absolutely fantastic. I think like Alioski it's a perfect had a performance. massive performance. Alioski it's a perfect performance. Your strikers scoring goals. The rest of your team are merging in the opponents. dropping into the holding role was unreal. Everyone yeah. just so click good. Click in there, the energy. You know, the mm. energy, the running of Shaq and Click. I'd love to see that again. Two yeah, eights just bombing around everywhere. It was awesome, man. So Fucking amazing. Like, so proud to see LS25 yeah. lad as well. You know, my, one of my own coming yeah. on and, you no, know, it was, his, it was his, his mum and dad beautiful. live in Kipax. It's just fucking... So come bad. on. Come on. Absolutely amazing. I'm just loving the ride and on to the next now. Like, can't wait for these games now, can you? Leicester. Bring it on. Yeah, bring it on. Why not? We're not scared of anyone, mate. Absolutely not. So, dead excited. So what proud. An amazing time. Yeah. Anyway, should we, do you want to do the link back to us? Let's, let's go back to us. If you are loving this podcast and you want to support us, you can go to Patreon, sign up. It's two minutes of your time. We rely on that because Rob and I work hard and we're trying to bring you the best podcast possible and yeah. for this to grow we need your support so it's patreon.com forward slash the bielsa bible you can sign up for them as little as three pound a month there's various tiers where you can get different perks you can get free merch but uh, basically what you get the main thing is access to all of the unedited videos we use in this podcast they're not all up there they're getting released weekly on yeah there. we'll keep that coming out we've got some amazing people oh, coming up God. as well we're, we're not we're not gonna say until we've I got know. it nailed in the until back it, until it's filmed you're I gonna be really say. excited yeah but, um new l's fans we've got a really really exciting one coming yeah up. we have so um if you want to be the first people to see that and the only people to see the whole interviews we've got interviews with john richardson with simon grayson with adam pope we've got other journalists coming up we've got fans from around the world we've got some really exciting people we so, have. yeah you won't check it on there we're going to be plan. putting up all sorts of extra stuff on there for patrons obviously this will always be free don't worry the church doors will always be free and open to everyone but if you want to support us and if you have the means to do it then come join us on patreon patreon.com forward slash the bielsa bible and we go to our regular feature saint of the week saint of the Saint of the week. So this week, um, because we're recording in the past, we are going from a previous week, but this person really deserves a saint odd. Yeah, and like last week we had so many nominations anyway, we're dead glad that we get to do an extra one. So uh, our nomination for Saint of the Week this week is Slavan Bilic. A fellow manager. Yeah, from West Brom. Slavan Bilic is uh, like, it seems like a great guy and he's someone who really supports Bielsa. He's someone who respects Bielsa a lot and has yeah. shown that a lot in They've the past. They've had some lovely exchanges haven't they last season exactly. and the previous season. Loads of respect like you say. Yeah, and like obviously that puts him in his good uh, our good books yeah, already. Totally. If you respect god then you know you've got a chance of yeah you him. have to worship god exactly to, to, you, know, you have to show that you love him and, and admire but him the why he is getting the saint of the week nomination this week isn't connected to his love for bielsa is because um of his opposition to pay-per-view on english football a thing that we've spoke about uh, at length last week something it's a scandal it's a scandal it's an no absolute other scandal. way to put it so uh, his words on it were fantastic though so here's what slavin said Football should be, well, not free, but affordable. And I always used to say that football's not polo. Football's not golf. Football is sport for the masses, you know? It's a working class sport and it should be affordable to everybody. I love the way the, the inflection there. You know, you, you included the way you said it as well. Thank you very beautiful. much. I didn't go for the accent. I, I was a bit disappointed. Yeah, well, you've done your Spanish so far. You've, exactly. I've, I've had not me one it go. too far, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I just think that's really, really beautiful and simple what he said there. But uh, it, it's, you know, it, he's completely correct. Well, that's exactly what we've been learning about Bielsa. When mm. Bielsa talks about football, it's for the people. Exactly. It's important to the people. And it's important to keep it available to the people. So, uh, Slavin, we wanted to reward you with Saint of the Week this week. Thank you so much for that. We did have another nomination worth considering yeah a brilliant one Rafinha yeah our new acquisition our Brazilian winger yes new Leeds United player here's what he said he said <laughs> people have compared me to other wingers in the Premier League like Pulisic and Bergwijn and Rashford but to be honest I don't really know who they are <laughs> 
<laughs> I just love that. I absolutely love it. I love it. It's so disrespectful. Yeah, but to, it's also... It's, but it's brilliantly in done. A, in a kind of bielsa way. It's like he's wrapped up in his own stuff so much. It's not that he's trying to disrespect them. He's just not aware. He's not you know what? It says one thing as well. Not everybody's obsessed with the Premier League. This is it. He's, he's like bringing, he's he's bringing been playing down in yeah. France. Yeah, you know. shut up. It's Marcus Rashford. Yeah, he's big in the UK, but who cares? Yeah. You know, I'm here from Brazil. I used to play in France and, and I don't know who you are. It's fantastic. <laughs> I mean, like, we love it. It's quote of the week, but we will give Saint of the Week. But I think the most deserving is Slavin Bilic. I yeah, he's really it. underpinning the principles of Bielsaism there. With yeah. his, with... And we just like him. We like Slavin Bilic. He seems like a good egg. Yeah. So, Slavin Bilic, Saint of the Week. Nice one, Slav. Saint of the Week. Saint of the Week. So if you're enjoying this and you want to show to the world your love of Marcelo Bielsa, we have merch available at the bielsabible.com forward slash shop. What we got, Mickey? We've got things you can wear outside the house, like these amazing t-shirts that have just come down in price. We've got a snapback that you can gloat to your friends. What's that? It's the Bielsa Bible on your head. Amazing. We've got mugs inside the house. You've got stuff like uh, stickers you can put around your house. Mm -hmm. They can also go on your car. Cushions. We've got cushions. Why not relax with a Bielsa Bible cushion? Yeah, they're really comfortable as well. They are dead nice, actually. Yeah, they really have upgraded yeah. these I would chairs. show you mine, but it's too comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> so, go to bielsabible.com forward slash shop if you want to grab any of that gear. It helps support the podcast and it makes you look cool as shit. Yep. Churchgoers, rest easy in your pews. For now, it is time for our sermon. But before, obviously, we must recite the Lord's Prayer. Our, our Father, who art from New Wells, Marcelo be thy name. Our king has come, thy will be done, on the pitch as it is in training. Give us each day our daily nutritionally balanced meals, and forgive us our bad passes, as we dispossess those who pass badly against us. Leads as man marking rotation has delivered us from EFL. For thine is the high line, the power, and the running, forever and ever. Vamos, Bielsa, carajo. I loved it in that intro. You went a bit David Attenborough. Yeah, I tried I, I try to mix it up a little with the Lord's Prayer. I, went, I, I think I went monotone last week. Yeah. And this time, a few more inflections and a, a, bit, a, nice. a, a bit of variation on Maybe the Maybe next week we can go jazzy. I don't... Beep, bop, beep, bop, beep, bop. <laughs> So the sermon today, we are discussing commitment and obsession and where the boundary between the two lies. Obviously, we know that Marcelo Bielsa is incredibly committed to his work, incredibly, more so than just about anyone. So we yeah. wanted to see where that boundary line was. Well, I think he could be described as an obsessive. Yeah. He has been described as being a football obsessive. Yeah, I think that's fair to say. I mean, like, it, it, the level uh, that he works at and the attention to everything he gives, it's. It, I think it would be fair to call it obsession. And we've spoken to a few people about this. We've got a couple of little stories we want to have a little look in. Yeah, that really show off his, his genuine yeah. obsession. Not just with football, actually. He's He seems to be an obsessive character. He is, in general. And, like, but the thing, the thing with him is, is whilst you know obsession is a, a strong word yeah but i think this nature of him is a big part of what we connect to and it's a big part of what we love about marcelo is this commitment and this obsession so it's a really important part of him and we spoke to mariano who you will have seen over the last few episodes he is a friend of the Such show a great interview oh god so great and uh handsome chap with a hell of a mustache yeah like he really is yeah. like he's a, he's a great dude and such an authority on you as old boys and really gives us that beautiful fans view on it and here's what he had to say about marcelo's commitment one of the things that i wanted to talk to you guys about one of the things that moves me and i guess so many people these this extreme this absolute uh tendency proclivity for something in an era when everything is a relative truth it could go this way or this way. We could dil dilute commitment. This guy will be 100% under the rain with the lower division kids and 100% committed to litter picking uh, before training uh, these plays for the first time. He'll be 100% committed. And that is a romantic uh, perspective on things. 
I think that's it. It really is because I, I must admit I'm not always the most committed person. Mm. I, I think that I'm I'm, I'm lazy by nature. My mum's mm. lazy. She tries to fight it. And at times I try to fight it, but yeah. a lot of the time I lose the battle. And I, yeah. I could just sit, I, I could sit staring at a wall and just think about nothing. Yeah, I'm and the nothing same. goes. Sometimes, like when I was a bit younger, and I was, you know, I was courting ladies, that, and like you know, you, you'd be, you'd be in love, and they'd, they'd be, they'd look at me and go, you know, like, oh, what are you thinking about? <laughs> and literally, I, I never had the heart to go. Absolutely, fucking nothing. There's nothing <laughs> going zero. on in my brain. I, I'm just staring at a wall. Yeah. But uh, I'd always like try and be like, you know, a bit mysterious, like. And, and, and just pass it off and we'll talk about something. Oh, it's so deep. What is stirring in that mind? Uh, Fuck all the answer. Absolutely not. Just nothing. staring at a wall, pretty stoned. <laughs> <laughs> As I was back then. But that's it. Like, I love how Mariano frames this and talking about it being romantic to be that committed. Like, Mariano's so poetic, isn't he? Yeah, he, he really he's is. He's a master of language. He's a, he's a linguist. Uh, so, like, he is incredible with that. But I, I think that's really true. That, that purity of the commitment. Because it's not commitment to what he's doing for the sake of the results it doesn't really matter what the result's going to be with marcelo he cares about being committed it's it, just important to be really, that committed it's not for show either no, Some people no. will, will if no like one's job interview i'm really committed or, or mm. someone will try to look like they're doing the right thing yeah, marcelo yeah just does the right thing he is always that committed and it is just it's part of his nature i don't think he's capable of stopping being that committed no. uh, like he is uh, for an example of how constantly committed and should we say obsessed here's a little story from tim rich's biographer about um well marcelo bielsa going on holiday yeah. <laughs> well, my favorite my favorite story is when he's at manager of atlas guadalajara mm -hmm. and um was working like he works, you know, non-stop, non-stop. And the directors say, look, why don't you take your wife and your wife's family to Puerto Vallarta, which is a beautiful uh, place on the uh, Pacific coast, uh, discovered by Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor in a house there. Take them away, take a very lovely hotel and just take a week off. You know, it's international week. We've got a friend against Puebla, but that's all. So he goes there. The family go on the, onto the beach and he stays in his hotel room and asks the hotel to send up two video records, two or two video records, and he gets out of his bag various tapes of Puebla that they're playing the friendly. No, it's not in a league match. In a league match. I think a friendly. And he sits there with his father, with his father in law, who is taking notes. He said he, he, says, he, he, he says to his father in law, You sit by me, we'll We'll, 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 we'll play videos of Puebla's last 10 games. I'll do a commentary and you take some notes. And they sat there for about a couple of days, just constantly taking notes. And he never set foot on the beach. And that was his holiday. <laughs> <laughs> and what his father-in-law thought, I'm God alone knows. He's yeah, like, that way to his father-in-law. Uh, you know, but it's so impressive. He's like, you're married in a Bielsa. Shit. You know. <laughs> right. Do not fuck this up. Whatever he says, <laughs> do it. <laughs> I love the idea, though, that his relaxation is analysing a friendly. You know, because the pressure's off a bit. That was what it was, you know. And uh, in, this, in this beautiful hotel, on this beautiful beach, um, just not just lock himself away you know and it's it's um but there's i mean you come so many there's so many stories about you know this 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 kind of obsession i mean he would get his wife in mexico to film training sessions mm. his wife's an architect and he'd get him to plan out geometrical runs and things like that for his players to go into you know there's no there was no absolutely certainly his early life he was so driven so obsessed um the, I, I, he would have been very difficult to live with. I would imagine his wife, who's, you know, <laughs> could tell a few stories about living with... Oh, wow. Yeah, he's... What a I just smile in watching that. I know, yeah, it just it's... makes you smile. It's such a funny story. Amazing. Like, what a, what a woman his wife is yeah. to put up with that. Yes. We, 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 one of the uh, one of our goals on this podcast is to try and get hold of a family... No, not not literally. Yeah, yeah we're not going to, like, kidnap him. You're <laughs> no, safe. Yeah. Don't worry. We'd like to speak to someone. We'd love to speak to his family to, mm. see, to see that part of his life. That's something that's shielded from us, definitely. Yeah, I don't think we ever will, though, to be honest. I think no, we also... I, 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 but we, we can we speculate. Yeah, we, we, we respect his privacy. Mm. 
mm. but that is just an incredible story to like his his idea like you said of, rela of relaxation is to watch videos of a friendly yeah. there's no need to do that that is obsession that, yeah. that is obsession. Oh, that is pure obsession when you're you're on holiday in a beautiful place with your family <laughs> like look i'm quite obsessive when it comes to like my career and comedy and i'm thinking about stand-up all the time and i'm always working on something i'm constantly blah, blah, blah. when i'm on holiday my phone is off i am gone i'm a ghost you cannot get me to think about work at all i'm so lazy on holiday i, I won't even read a book like i take books on holiday <laughs> I take him. It can be hard reading a book. Well, like, yeah, sometimes like, especially if the print's small. I don't like small font. Look, and, and I've got to have pictures because if you if you have if you are you honest, taking pop up books on holiday. No, it's just right. If you've got <laughs> you've got an interesting book right, and, it, and it's got small font, and then you're reading it, and your brain's going, "This is fucking really hard." And then like, and you get to the end of the first page, you've got another page. It's the same. There's no pictures. There's not even a paragraph. You know, paragraph. You know, the breaks or the yeah. big the big word at the start of a paragraph. I like that big letter. It just takes up space. And, you, and by the end of it, you're like, "I win it." at the end now when it late at the end when it and then you turn the page and go, oh we've got to fucking do it again you know, <laughs> it just never ends so, it's really hard mate I, I love reading i do but like when i'm on holiday, Not on holiday. i just don't want to think about anything I, i'm I'm same as you though I, my relaxation state is just staring it's just like oh no that's my work state <laughs> 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 relaxation state i don't want to talk about that you've seen me out well like you do you, like with this story it's like i love it because it, it's so it's such an instructive it's bielsa so story. bielsa it's so on brand but like what you do a bit want to go marcelo just have a beer mate he was in the dark our, our curtains definitely drawn oh yeah he wasn't yeah, there, the telly. Yeah. no yeah too right yeah. the curtains are drawn they've got and it, oh god how much would you pay we'd have to we'd have to be able to speak spanish so to 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 take the notes of this commentary on a game. I know. Oh, fucking hell, that'd be it's amazing. It's so interesting to see what notes he makes, because, like, oh, yeah, man, it, must been, it must have been a tense environment with his father-in-law as well, taking the notes. Yeah. And, like, imagine going to your father-in-law and going, like, can yeah. you just take notes for two days of our holiday? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what are you... <laughs> just to think off the, off the plane, so what are your plans? Well, I was going to visit the beach. I've got something else on the mind. We've got any excursions <laughs> would you, planned? <laughs> would, you like, do, would you fancy locking yourself in the hotel room with me and watching some videos? Right. We could go snorkeling or... <laughs> yeah, I've got... I've got, got 10 Puebla games to yeah. watch. <laughs> Well, it's a friendly as well. Uh, it's absolutely it's a amazing. friendly. You don't need to do that, Marcelo. Any other coach in the world would have gone, eh, it's a friendly, who cares? Oh, not Marcelo. That, that, is, that is pure obsession. That, that is pure obsession. That's when commitment and obsession yeah, are, are it, definitely look, defined. It's a lot. And for most people, I would say that that is an unhealthy level of obsession. I would say for most people, if you're putting in that much work on holiday, you really need to yeah. sort it out, like turn your phone off, whatever. But I... Bielsa's different. He's special. Yeah. I don't think he would enjoy sitting still on a beach for a couple of days. I don't know. Maybe he can't. Not while he's working. When he's in one of those reflective states he sometimes has where he takes a couple of years. Yeah, we've we've, we've learned about his monasteries and, mm. and um, I think Bielsa can sometimes fall into a state of collapse. Yeah, and sometimes he just takes a little break to step back. He does. And, like, I, he might go home and relax for a while. In fact, on, but like even his home back in Argentina, his ranch that he and his family have back yeah. in Argentina... It's not necessarily a place of relaxation no. as well. Oh, imagine getting invited to the ranch. Uh, the ranch is the ultimate dream. It's never going to happen, Mickey. We're going to have to give up on well, that. Why? Well, maybe, actually. We are, we are, you know, we are disciples. Well, we, we've talked about this and yeah. uh, whether we want to meet him or not. And you we said you would, do. and I've said I, 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 I'm not sure. We definitely do. We do, don't we? The I'm ranch just, is I'm the ultimate. Cool. But we spoke to Henry Winter, Times journalist in the UK. Um, like He was speaking to us about what he knows of Bielsa's ranch. And again not the best place for him to relax that's not the purpose it's of it. not a relaxation ranch so coming back to the sort of the argentinian journalists that i know a couple of them know him very well and have been out to his ranch and they just say it is unbelievable there you know you think almost like the internet hasn't existed because he's got you know he, he keeps all his paper cuttings of coaches who impress him ideas and he's almost got an aircraft hangar full of uh, of details so in terms of this amazingly obsessive so sort a of messiah type character who's landed in our midst and particularly into your midst. Um, yeah, I was fairly aware of him. 
There we go. So the, the house, the ranch, is just full of papers and documents. All those notes. All the, cause, you know, it, Carl, he doesn't throw anything away, does he? No. What do you reckon his filing system's like? Oh, I bet it's dead maverick. I bet, I, it, yeah. I bet he's got his own filing system that no one else can decipher. Like, you know, it'll be by club or by player. He'll be able to look up things. Yeah, you I know bet, it's organised. Yeah, oh, definitely. He could get to, if you said, uh, have you got the notes on a certain player in a certain, certain game? Year, a certain game, yeah, exactly. Yeah. He'd go, yeah, just give me 30 seconds. Bam, have you? There. You got any notes on the 10 games before you played Pebbler in a friendly? <laughs> that was like, scrolled by my father-in-law, I believe, yeah. yes. Do you reckon he bollocked him as well? Like, Oh, if he got something wrong, he would. Yeah, yeah, keep, yeah. Up, keep up with yeah. it. Yeah, it's like, oh, like, God, that's... sweating, like, oh, God. Oh. But, like, those files would be such a treasure trove. There must be some amazing things in there. Like. I'd, I'd love for someone to go in and just do a little video tour of his ranch. Oh, it'd be amazing. That'd and, be like, amazing. just to see the wealth see the of information. System. Yeah, the wealth of information. Wow. Absolutely incredible. I wonder, so, I wonder what souvenirs he keeps from his playing days or from, or from his managerial days. I wonder it? if he keeps it. I don't know, if, I don't, I don't know how sentimental he is with I stuff I was just like thinking that. that. I, I'm not sure he's the type of person I mean, that would look back. He, he does keep some mementos, though, because he gave um, his new L shirt to Calvin Phillips remember when oh, calvin yeah, that's right got his first cap for england he marcelo did. gave calvin phillips his new l shirt and calvin gave his england shirt to marcelo oh that is gesture. just so beautiful so you know I, I think that uh, marcelo will keep things though. i think uh, i would imagine part of his filing is keeping letters from fans and mementos and things like that i think he would i think he would because yeah. he cares about that and he cares about that love that he feels from fans uh, and you know what we've talked about football and his clear obsession with mm. football but He's also obsessed with other things in life. His life yeah. isn't just full of football. He's, he loves food. He loves mm. cinema, like we said. And Well, the food store, he used to apparently order everything on the menu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's like because he wanted to experience everything. So yeah. he's always got a, such a passion for life. He's got yeah. so many obsessions. A lust for life. He's yeah, just he got that joie de vivre. Yeah. Oh, no, you have nailed it today. Mate, I'm all over these fucking accents. Uh, totally. But do you know what? They, they, he, he, there must be a, a time where he switches off, but I, I don't know if there is because there's so many obsessions in his life. And this not only is his it. family. Even his when family is an obsession for him as well mm. he, he speaks so highly of them and they speak so highly of him there's a clear he's been with his wife for many years yeah, and, yeah. and you know he seems to be a good father figure we don't know he's, he's quite he's it, probably it, quite absent he's doing a lot of work i'm about to say that he, very he, loving very caring very wise yeah you know? i mean how does he fill the time well they say he, he just his hobbies are something we've uh trying to investigate a bit more and what yeah. he's interested in and we found out that he is a massive film buff yeah uh, he Marcelo. loves cinema but the, the problem for marcelo is even when he's trying to relax and just enjoy some cinema, mm. he he his brain operates at such a high level he of is, obsession. <laughs> yeah, that he I don't know if he ever stretches off because this is how right we've got another story from Tim Rich. This is great. This is about how Marcelo engages with film, with the and medium cinema. of film. Yeah. yeah, he would send the film directors critiques of their films. As one one film director sort of had a package delivered to him, which was a critique of all the films he'd ever directed by Bielsa. Yeah, he'd gone through them all when he said he were, I thought he were about it. Yeah, he could have been a film director. He could have been a film director. Yeah, a lot of people who know him say he could have been a film director. <laughs> That's it. He doesn't just sit back and watch. He's taking notes when he's watching yeah. the films. He can't switch off, like you say. Yeah. He's got this op this this obsessive mind and mm. even when he's I mean they say a bit, a bit of film director when, when, when I watch a movie sometimes a film if you want to go to American on that with a movie time yeah at the but, driving yeah. <laughs> and with the with, with, I'll just get lost in the narrative and but I think Bielsa was looking at the lighting he's looking at the setting he's looking at how the it's yeah, where, 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 where the camera is and how yeah. it's filmed uh, but, but he's got that attention to detail that, that exactly. level of obsession that he, he carries with him in his life it's, it's that kind of um curse of genius almost it's mm. that he he is such a genius that you know it must be difficult to switch that off he's constantly analyzing he's constantly seeing things in a way other people aren't with his genius yeah and like that extends through to film and like can you imagine being that director oh wow i know like, you, you get like every film is ever directed and bielsa's giving you a little critique of each one yeah I but mean, like i can't I'm like bielsa it's, it's doesn't his mince favorite his words. one it's his favorite director so i'm so sure it was we'll, positive sure but Bielsa also doesn't mince his words and no, he spots it, details if he can so. try and improve him he will exactly it so it won't be completely blowing smoke up his bum it will be a critique yeah well. it's, it's like staying extra it's like extra training isn't it stay you know this this yeah. film director's obviously done a good job and and made some good films but bielsa's saying to him 
yeah, you can improve. Let's keep yeah, working hard. Be Let's fair, go I'm... make your bet. Ne- go make your next film the best one. Yeah, I think that, that that's a beautiful element of it, and that would be why he's doing that. He's not looking to show, but he's not looking to tell anyone off with that. He's genuinely going, "Here's some ideas I've had for how it could mm. be better." To be honest, I've watched some films where I wanted to write to the director. I saw Pearl Harbor, and I wanted to write a very strongly worded oh, letter to whoever it's wrote the, that. It's the I American shit. shite Hollywood, right. you know. That I, I've, I've started watching <laughs> British films more actually. Me and Rach have been getting into that because. I much prefer them that this hot, this boring American, you know, the hero wins in the yeah, end, you know, yeah. with the American flag Just in the background. Of special effects and all that. Yeah, uh, that's we, definitely not the cinema Bielsa is into. No, he's much more like into art house. He's a very, very intelligent highbrow. If I was to send the same guy a critique of his films, I'd just say I didn't understand it. It's in Spanish, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to do it in That's English. Do a lot of reading. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, just try it in English, mate, and and you know I want the hero to win in the end, mate. Yeah. Come on. Well, this is a, like there is definitely a real downside to this level of obsession. Obviously, it's what makes us love him, and it what makes him him, and it what it's what makes him incredible. You can't separate Marcelo Bielsa from obsession. You no. can't because that, that is who he is. But I I think there is obviously a, a price to pay for that that he suffers, a price that he pays, and it can't be easy living with this. And we've got an example here from our friend Wanny. Um, who uh, translates a lot of videos on uh, Twitter. Yeah, you've got it. You, you've got you to follow you don't know Wani, Wani Jimena, then my God. Go get... back and watch previous episodes. We've spoken yeah. to Wani before. We absolutely love him. And he told us this story of an example of when his obsessive mind can't let something go. And we'll, yeah, we'll and I think we that. all suffer from that at times. Mm. He's always, he analyzes everything. I, I, I want to give you this example. Uh, in 2004, we play the final, the Copa America final against Brazil. We, Argentina was winning the game once, one nil. One minute after the half time, there's a free kick for, from to Brazil near the box. Uh, the, the ball goes inside the box. A Brazil player make a header, goal, one one, half time. Then we lost the final, 2004. Two years later, 2006, the goalkeeper of that Argentina team was Abondancieri. The guy was a, the goalkeeper from Boca Juniors at that moment, but in 2006, he was the goalkeeper from Getafe in Spain. He was in the training session, and a mailman came with a letter and said, Abondancieri, here's a letter for you. In the middle of the training session, he received the letter. It was a Marcelo Bielsa letter. Two years later, in the late in the letter, he congratulated him because uh, he, he he couldn't make it to, to play in Europe. I'm happy with your career, blah blah blah. But I have a question. Say the letter. Why you put four players on the wall in that free kick and leave? Inside the box, the same players, Argentina and Brazil players, there are six Brazilians, six Argentines, because the goalkeeper put four players on the wall. And yes, and then if you watch the, the video, he's right. But of look, course he is. Of course he's right. In... <laughs> always, he's always right. Always. It, it, it was obviously that he's going, not going to shoot on goal. You don't need to put four uh, players uh, on the wall. You need to put two and more people inside the box. Oh, Amazing yeah. that, isn't it? Two, two, years, two later. years later, and he sent him a letter as well. In this the world it. of emails, he sent him a letter. Well, yeah, you've got to beware a letter from BLC. Yeah. But that, that shows his, um, again, obsession with that. The fact that he just couldn't let it go. The fact that he... he it, it brings out it his human wrong. side. We talk about this mm. as a religion and him as a god, but it brings out his human side because this this managerial appointment for him was the pinnacle. Of course, he, managing your country, managing his the country. responsibility of the joy of your entire nation, it, it weighed very heavily yeah, on him, it really didn't and and that and that defeat was i don't i mean has he ever got over it mm. i don't think it's something you get over that it's no it's, it's you can't change the past but and after that after that defeat he went into a monastery for three months and to live on his own and he, he cut himself off from the world the pain he felt and then obviously he's gone through this a million times in his mind and and this this error from the keeper. What one of you know? The, you lose the game of football. There's so many different ways to lose it. But this error from the keeper's obviously really, really got to him. Mm. And 
And it's two years later, he felt the need to write a letter to get it off his chest. Yeah, to try and get that closure, I guess. I suppose. So he can try and move on from it. But it's clear that, you know, these things weigh in t- incredibly heavily on him. It must have been an incredibly difficult time. It like- is. And, and look, looking back at your obsession, we all obsess. I think obsession is probably a natural human trait to mm. get something right for survival, to make sure it's correct. Yeah. But then looking backwards it, it, and obsessing about something you can't change, it's... It, it harms you mentally. It can mm. be really difficult. I mean, I, I can relate to that directly because two years, two and a half years ago, I did the Britain's Got Talent. For those who aren't aware, Britain's Got... I'm sorry aware Britain's Got Talent because it's, yeah, every it's country everywhere. has it. And like Chile, um, they they watch Britain's Got Talent. <laughs> yeah, they've we've said had, that on yeah, email, we've, haven't we've, they? We've had some comments from people saying they've seen you on Britain's yeah, Got Talent I mean, in Chile. Britain's Got Talent for me was 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 really good and, and really bad because... I got to the final and it was the biggest opportunity of my life. Mm. You know, I mean, and it was like 15 million people. It's the chance I've been waiting for on my entire life. And to try and bypass the industry, go straight to the people. If I if I do well there, if I win, I, I'm set up financially. Mm. And my dreams come true in terms of being a full-time artist. The possibilities are, are endless, really, mm. from, from winning a competition like that or doing really well. And the final went so badly. Um, and I won't bore you with the details too too much but what happened was i had these set routines that i was going to do mm. and it was all ready for the final all set up and i got through on the friday night and the final was on the sunday so i went out and partied with I had three or four mates that had, you know i woke up midday saturday uh, i'd done really well in the semi-final it was a bit of a dream come true and then i'm straight to the um where was it hammersmith apollo and i said right it's the final and we'd not discussed it mm. and then he went this the producers tell you it's very much you know you have to write down everything you're going to say it's very much crafted and like, like this is what you're doing they don't want any surprises mm-hmm. i said i've got a great routine i know it's going to do well yeah. it's perfect and they went oh it's about bg's lyrics it had some bg and they went oh you can't use that prs mm-hmm. and then he went why don't you do i'm not arrogant and that's the moment i obsess over because that's when it all went wrong for me as soon as you know as as well as anyone in the stand-up if you get the material wrong for the crowd mm. you, you're on a loser there's not much you can do it and it was such a bad choice of material and i remember saying to rach um just before it going i'm not sure this is going to work this is a massive risk but the, but the moment i've obsessed about is that moment where it went no don't do that just do this instead and i just took it i, I didn't mm. i didn't fight that decision and that was the moment where it all went wrong the performance was actually all right i mean i did yeah. fall out with the crowd and <laughs> tell them to shut up but yeah. uh but i could see it was going wrong and you know and it, that that's cost me and i've obsessed about it in the in on the day it was all right mm. it's the nights after where i realized that yeah. I've, I've fucked this up and and it's only a talent show you know there's there's bigger things in life but then i've obsessed about it and and rage dealt with it really because i kept saying the same thing over and over and and then then in the end she's like you've got to get over this Mm. and it was and i didn't sleep very well for about four or five nights but that's the weeks and months after it that i was still looking back and if i'm honest two years two years was was i I was it's been two and a half years now and i'm still pissed off about it i still i still obsess about it in a weird way no no you do like i know it's something you've been carrying yeah it is and i I didn't i made the decision not to speak about it and not to go oh i've got this excuse of why it went wrong i thought just carry it Mm. but to be fair rach was the one that had to deal with it because i would would tell her about it but i just kept my bloody mouth shut and the weird thing was i had to do loads of interviews after it about how great it was yeah and i was fucking gutted to fuck the bloody opportunity of a lifetime of so yeah. I, I can relate to that because sure but it plays on your mind and, and the more you let it grow and manifest mm. the more it you've got it you've got to find closure on it definitely I mean, like it, it's look there's cliches with it but i think it's important to look at you know to take the positives from it right you didn't win you, the final oh didn't, no and, the final didn't go how you wanted but it has given you a career you yeah know, it, it has, has it, a lot of people have found you from britain's got totally talent right. and know who you are and you were a lot further than you were and like the the successes you had all the way through that competition haven't changed too right and, and and because of that maybe i wouldn't i, I thought like writing the bielsa rhapsody was mm. huge for me because i was yeah. emotionally I, I, the people talk about mental health that's the first time i've really struggled mm. with it and I, I was struggling with myself and i felt I felt like I, I felt shame. I felt, I felt like I'd let the Leeds United fan base down because it was pre Bielsa. Yeah. We had nothing else to shout, and they got so f- behind me. I got seventy thousand votes in that final, and it was shit. It's all because Leeds marched yeah. on together, and I thought, fuck, I fuck that. But when I wrote the Bielsa Rhapsody, it helped 
with the acceptance of it that it helps me get over it and, and i've learned that you don't, can be successful without it as well. yeah and don't don't my you know the lesson i've tried to learn from it is just looking back and obsessing mm. there's fuck all you can do and it and it just it's that it's it's you know it's i think obsession can be really really useful and can be really helpful but when you've got to obsess on things that you can actually affect you can't yeah. you can't affect your past you, you right. just can't it's gone you've got to deal with it learn your mistakes from it you know learn obsession from is it. a tool you can use in the future in the present but it's yeah. not something that you can you know you can look back on your life and and enjoy it enjoy most but if you if you're obsessing about things even if it's good as well to think yeah. to obsess about a good thing in your life you're looking back and, don't, and, and don't that, end up that can, looking forward no and, and that can affect you as well have mm. you got stuff you've ever obsessed about well like yeah i'm, I'm, I'm quite an obsessive person mm. like in general like, i i struggle with those sort of things as well looking back on stuff i've got better with that i've got better at just focusing completely blinkered forwards but that was you know that took a while to get to with me like i don't know like yeah i've always been quite obsessive i have to be very careful with myself because i get obsessed with stuff and i get way too into it and like um, like bielsa <laughs> like bielsa this, but that's is, a healthy this is one of my healthy ones my yeah. healthy ones are like bielsa and stand-up comedy and football right those things i'm obsessed with and that's great those are all healthy for me and good but in the past it hasn't always been like that like i was kind of obsessed with having a good time was my thing i was obsessed with like having a rush and a buzz like, mm. I, I don't drink anymore um, because i was a bit too much of a legend you were a fucking legend i really was uh which is why i don't anymore it, it wasn't like i was like physically dependent i wasn't getting the shakes when i didn't drink i wasn't waking up and drinking alcohol to like and i wasn't even like particularly like um mad depressed all the time i would sometimes like, i've been up and down through my life but like for me it was like um it was just constant and not being able to uh, i don't have that kill switch i just get really i'm like more 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 i get obsessed with like the night going bigger the buzz getting bigger more 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 and like that's why i had to knock it on the edge because it was just going in a bad direction so i can definitely relate to like obsessing on stuff and i look back at loads of things i fucked up because i was like do you ever look back at a heckler and go fuck i should have said uh, that <laughs> that, that's a big stand-up like, i've, thing, had, I've had a couple where like i fucked up gigs because i was drunk you know mm. I, like i really like i really like i obsessing. fuck up gigs because i'm sober sometimes <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like look it's really easy to like mentally obsess about things i definitely do that and like i really really try work hard on uh noticing when that's happening now and sort of cutting it off at the yeah, past. I'm I, a lot I, better at that. I think most people do, particularly yeah. when you're younger as well. Like, you know, the, the te do, you, do you remember at school when, like, you, do you have that girl that was obsessed with your mate? And whatever your mate said yeah. to her, she went, oh, God, I love him. And like, I just shut up, fuck off. And that, that, that people get obsessed in love, don't they, as well? Yeah, like, I was, obsessed with uh, other people. As a teenager, I was like, I, I went from unrequited love to unrequited love as a teenager. Me too. I was, I was shit. I was oh, yeah, shit. Until I was an adult. Yeah. Like, yeah, I think I still am. Oh yeah, but you don't need to anymore. No, right. I've got you're one now. Game. Yeah, you're got talking. pregnant. <laughs> Tied it down. Yeah, but yeah, no, that's it. It's like I think um, I because I, I am such an obsessive person, I just have to be careful in which direction I point it, and I've got to be really on top of myself with that, and I've got to like let myself because like, yeah, if I like get into a computer game, that's me done. I'm over like <laughs> weeks. Like I, I will lose 24 hours playing a career mode game on FIFA just like that. Just gone. Yeah. Like so. Like when I got into roulette, that was a bad time. Yeah. <laughs> so, Bit of a gambler. Yeah, I yeah. was. So well, again, do you know what? That, that. that relates to football and and the dark side of it. How many betting ads do we constantly see That's around? Grim, it? And, and yeah, betting's a big thing now. It wasn't so much 10 years ago. No, it wasn't. So you know, it's it's a thing to be aware of. But yeah, it's about using, managing your obsession and using them in positive ways. Mm. And I think Bielsa is a shining example of. That. like it, whilst his obsession is such it doesn't give him a chance to have a break and he does need to lay off his own back sometimes and like forgive himself i think realize... that uh, yeah i think so. i think i'd sometimes feel like he can't forgive himself especially yeah. you know that, that there's that that great picture of him just def the defeat the QPR game. yeah and you can see the pain you can see yeah. the dejection that is it, physical that, there's that problem of taking everything on yourself is that sometimes it's not your fault especially in football football's random but know? i think when you take responsibility like bielsa does then you then you also bear the responsibility of, of the defeat and, mm. and and you can look back and obsess and we know that he's looked back on two years of that that really he, he left management as well that pain he suffered a lot of pain bills and that's part of who he is yeah exactly it really is and and it, we can learn from that if you if you are obsessed about something you know so try and write it down it's a good way of actually getting your feelings it out does write actually. that letter even if it's just to yourself yeah like that's it and like recognize that you're doing it and recognize that at some point you've got to make a conscious choice it's it's a it's kind of a taboo with mental health i think and this is just my opinion i'm not a fucking doctor i'm just someone who's dealt with this shit 
at some point you kind of have to make a choice to be better you have to like and it doesn't mean that you are better instantly it doesn't mean that you f instantly forget about the thing you're obsessing about you have to realize there is a time when it is done and it is over and you have to start moving on and every time you start thinking about it you need to have that thought no nope, you have, to, you have to have and a strategy, don't eventually, you? Eventually, you know, the, the cliches of time's a healer and all that, eventually it does float away. And I hope that Bielsa now looks back on that and realises it's not his fault. He told the keeper to put four men, put two men in the wall. Yeah, he put four. Shit, keeping that. He's, he's, not, he's, he's trying to protect his own goal, but he should have been trying to protect the penalty area. Exactly. So, you know, sometimes it isn't your fault. And let yourself off, you know, like people are human. And like even our Lord and Saviour Marcelo Bielsa is human and he has made mistakes so if he has, you will too. Let yourself off, right? And like, no opportunity is final. Like to talk about your uh, Brits Got Talent experience, you're out the other side now. We've got this. We're doing this amazing. We're doing stuff. this. You know what? Everything that's happened is set, but it happens for a reason, which is bollocks. But oh, totally. things have happened, and we are where we are, and we're all part of You've it. You've still got a beautiful, bright future. You know, it's not taking that from you. You know it? what? We've got Bielsa. Exactly. Who needs Britain's Got Talent? We've got Bielsa. Praise be Marcelo. So, as always, to finish our episode, we are going to delve into the archives of the Bielsa Bible. We've unearthed another dusty tome from <laughs> Mickey's personal stash. We're looking into the stories you might not have heard elsewhere. These stories no one's heard before. These are very secret Bielsa tales that only we have access to. This is an incredible tale as well. Mm. I, I, let's begin. There was once a teenage boy whose obsession with football knew no bounds. He lived and breathed for the beautiful game and slept with a football every night under his duvet and he kissed its leathery skin every morning when he woke. But alas, the teenage boy, despite his obsession, could never play the beautiful game. For his legs were frail and weak. They were bony and brittle, battered and bruised, bent and bambi-like, broken and badly made. His knees were thicker than his thighs. Where his buttocks should have been, there was simply nothing but thin, shiny skin. His arsehole was bigger than his arse. To everyone but his parents, he was simply known as shit legs. Shit legs would often sit and watch others play football for his obsession, his appetite, his hunger for the game was insatiable. And soon he developed a fine mastery of tactics and analysis. He would often shout advice from the touchlines, displaying his tactical wizardry and encouraging his friends to create overloads and numerical superiorities all over the pitch. But the response was always the same. Shut up, shit legs. What do you know? Every night, shit legs would pray the same prayer. He just wanted to know what it felt like to run with speed, to tackle with ferocity, to carry the ball at his feet with skill and creative flair. He simply wanted to know what it felt like to join in, to be part of the team. He was a good boy, a kind-hearted soul, and he made his parents proud. He faced up to every challenge and never once complained about his situation, even when his PE teacher wrote in his school report that he had a fantastic attitude towards sport. But because of his incredibly shit legs, it was best that he just sat out and watched. Every night, his father would hear him whispering the same words before tucking himself in with his ball and closing his eyes, his hands still clenched in the position of prayer. But one morning, the boy awoke kissed his football and leapt out of bed. Something felt different. As he looked himself in the mirror, a wide smile beamed across his face. He had perfect footballer's legs. They were simply incredible. As he athletically vaulted the stair banister and landed as perfectly as a pissed up Rob Mulholland, he saw his father and told him his prayers had been answered. I already know, Maurizio replied his father excitedly. A man came in the middle of the night and demanded to see your legs. And there they were. The best footballing legs I've ever seen. What was his name? asked Maurizio curiously. He did not say. He just left a contact number for New Orleans Old Boys Youth Academy. Strange though, he was wearing a Leeds United tracksuit. Well, there we go. Wow. I mean, what a story. Yeah, fantastic. So that young boy 
grew up to be Mauricio Pochettino. Well, that's what people think and what mm. people say. We'll never know the truth. We'll never know the truth. Yeah, that's 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 the legend. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, there we are. Another beautiful parable to wrap up the episode. Yeah, I mean, there's only three three words to say, isn't there? Well, before we go... Well, uh, I was going to say, fuck Britain's Got Talent. But, uh, <laughs> that's before, four words. Before we go, uh, buy yourself some merch, bielsabible.com oh, come forward on. slash it's shop. Great. And join us on Patreon. It is patreon.com forward slash the Bielsa Bible. Your support is really appreciated. But yeah, we will go with the final three words, as ever. Vamos, Bri- <laughs> <laughs> Vamos, Vamos, Bielsa, Carajo! Carajo.